date dot now. To make it even more random, we can get another random number. And that's going to be equal to math dot random. So we're using a lot of built in JavaScript functions. And finally, we can make it even more random by creating a hexadecimal string. And that's equal to random number dot to string. And we're going to get 16 characters. Finally, we can return an ID with the template string of ID dash timestamp, and then dash hexadecimal string. So now we're sure that this is going to generate a unique random ID. Now, keep in mind, I'm not yet showing you anything on the screen. Now, if you scroll at the top, you're going to notice that we have a typo right here, it was supposed to be bot. And the reason why I'm not showing you what's happening on the screen is because there's nothing. Right now, we're in the process of creating the logic for our AI application to work. Later on, once we implement the functionality, we're going to put the code editor side by side by the browser to be able to see the changes that we make in the code live. But for now, we're focusing on the functionality. Now, if you look at the finished version of the application, you can notice that for each message, each new prompt and each new answer, there's a new stripe, a new color that appears. It goes from darker gray to lighter gray and so on. Also, each message has an icon if it's us or if it's AI, and it also has a message. So let's implement that chat stripe. Let's create a function called chat stripe, just ask codex, which is going to take a couple of parameters. Exercise. First, so it AI gives me a JavaScript coding gonna get the challenge. Let's see what it comes up with. Create a function that takes in an array of numbers and returns the sum of all the numbers in that array. So this is a prompt and it even gives us a solution if we want to check ourselves up. With that said, let's dive straight into the development of our great application so you can build this incredibly smart AI completely by yourself and deploy to the internet entirely for free for the entire world to use. To get started with building our great AI application, we're going to first open up an empty Visual Studio Code window and create a new empty folder on our desktop. Let's call it open AI and then underscore codex. Of course, feel free to call it however you want. But the point is we're starting from bare beginnings. Once you have your empty folder, simply drag and drop it into your Visual Studio Code. Let's expand our Visual Studio Code and open up our terminal by going to View and then Terminal. To create the front end or the client side of our project, we're going to use a build tool called Vite. But to use Vite, we have to use npm, and to use npm, we have to use Node. So to check if you have Node installed on your device, type Node V. If nothing comes up, simply go to nodejs.org and download it and install it for your own operating system. Once that is done, you're ready to run npm create vite at latest client dash dash template space vanilla. This is going to create a vanilla JavaScript repository. Let's press Y and then enter. And right now, let's let it do set up a vanilla JavaScript project using vite. Use Node.js for the server side. Create responsive layouts with pure CSS. Handle events with JavaScript. Render markdown from strings. Use Prisma for code highlighting. Make API requests. Catch errors. Write clean code. And much more. If this video reaches 20,000 likes, I'll record more AI JavaScript applications. Before we begin, please allow me to give you a quick demo of the application to better understand all of the great functionalities you'll build today. Before I show you a couple of things our AI can do, let's let it introduce itself by typing write code that says, hello world, I'm Codex in Python, C, Rust, Ruby, and JavaScript. And just like that, it's going to start introducing itself to all of you. That's amazing. But now let me show you what else it can do. You can let it suggest you five advanced project ideas in React.js. 
and immediately it's going to suggest building a real-time chat application, a ReactJS based image recognition app, video streaming, voice assistant, and augmented reality apps. If you want to brush up on your JavaScript skills, you can ask it to tell you a bit more about map, filter, and reduce methods in JS. And as you can see, with giving you the entire description of what the map method does, it even gives you a syntax and an example. It's going to do the same thing for the filter with the syntax and the example, and finally for the reduce method. Isn't that amazing? But now let me show you something even better. We're going to ask it to write a post route that registers a car info to MongoDB after passing all validations of no empty fields, email exists, and so on, and we wanted to use async await. And just like that, it immediately started typing everything you need for a proper post request. Isn't that phenomenal? As you can see, it handles everything from JavaScript to React, but even Python, C, and Rust. In addition to answering questions, Codex can also help you practice your code do its thing. We can select a framework, which is going to be vanilla in this case. It's going to be a JavaScript project. And that's it, we're done. You can see that the new client folder has been generated for us. We have to CD into client and then run npm install to install all the necessary packages. All of the logic for this project is going to be written entirely by you. But to save you some time, I went ahead and collected all of the assets that we'll be using throughout this project so you don't have to search for them across the web, you're gonna simply get them in a zipped folder. So down in the description, there's going to be a link to download all of these zipped assets. Once you unzip them, you can simply right click right here and paste the assets folder straight into the client. There's only one more thing you have to get from down in the description from a GitHub gist, and that's going to be a style.css file. So you can get it from the description, find it on the GitHub gist, delete everything that is currently in the style.css and override it with our code right here. Again, this doesn't contain any logic, it just contains some simple styles to make our application look better so we can save some time and focus on developing artificial intelligence instead of worrying about the CSS. Finally, from within the assets folder, we can move our favicon into our public folder right here and delete the basic vite.svg. Now we can also delete the counter.js because we don't need it. And we can move straight into the index.html. This is the starting point of our application. Inside of here, instead of rendering the vite.svg, we're going to render the favicon.ico for our favicon. Then we're going to change the title of our application to Codex, your coding AI. And a really important thing, we also have to add a link tag that's going to look like this, link rel stylesheet with an href of style.css. That's going to link our internal stylesheet. Finally, in the body, we're gonna write here and say chat underscore container, which is exactly how we called it right here in index.html. And then the form, we didn't get by ID, but we simply got by tag name because this is the only form in our index.html. Now that we have those two elements, we can also create one variable, let load interval. So this is going to be a variable that we're gonna fill in later on. For now, we simply wanted to declare it in this outer scope. Now, later on, we're gonna also have a function that's going to load our messages. So we can say function loader, it's going to take in an element and it's going to return something. And if you remember how our code works, this loader is simply going to return three dots. Let me show you what I mean in the finished version of our application. So if you type how to create a functional component in React, while it thinks it's going to render three dots one by one, eding into client if you were still in the root and run npm run dev. This is going to start the application on localhost 5173. So hold control and then click this link. Now you'll be able to see our great favicon at the top saying codex you're coding AI, but there is an error. It's looking for counter.js, 
And remember, that's that little thing that we removed. So actually, we don't need anything that is inside of the script right now. So we can simply delete it. If you do that, you can see Codex. Right now, Codex is a simple, dumb form where you can simply type something, submit it, and it's not going to do absolutely anything. But at least it looks nice so far. Now, the goal is to take this empty script and teach you how to connect it to the OpenAI API to get prompts from it and actually provide intelligent answers based on what you type. So with that said, we are ready to get started with creating our script. To get started implementing our functionality, let's first start by importing the icons from our assets. So we can say import bot from dot slash assets bot dot SVG. And we can repeat the process for importing our user icon from dot slash assets forward slash user dot SVG. Great. Now we're not working with React this time. So we have to target our HTML elements manually by using document.querySelector. So we can say const form is equal to document.querySelector is equal to, and then we call it as a function and provide the ID name, in this case, form. We can also do a similar thing with our chat container by saying const chat container is equal to document.querySelector and then we can pass the ID selector, have our div with an ID of app. And we're going to also have a self-closing div right here at the top. So div with an ID equal to chat underscore container. This is going to be the container that's going to wrap our entire application. Now, keep in mind, it is self-closing itself right here. But below that, we're going to create our form that's going to allow us to type into it. Inside of the form, we're going to have a text area element. That text area is going to have a name equal to prompt, allowing us to type in there. It's going to have a number of rows equal to one. It's also going to have a number of calls or columns equal to one as well. And placeholder is going to be equal to a string of ask codex dot dot dot. Perfect. And finally, we have to submit our form somehow. So we can add a button that's going to be of a type submit. And inside of it, we can render a self closing image that's going to have the source equal to assets forward slash send dot SVG. This is one of three SVG images that I provided for you in the assets folder. And finally, we have to hook it up with our script module. That's not going to be main.js, rather it's going to be just script.js. So we can change this main to script right here. There we go. And with that, we should be ready to run our application and see something in the browser. But right now it seems like we have some code already in our script. So let's try to run it and see if anything happens. We can go to view and then terminal. We can clear it. Make sure that you're inside of the client folder by C111 and then zero. And it's going to repeat that until we actually get the answer. That is how we're going to implement the loading for our application. So going back here, first of all, we have to say element dot text content is equal to an empty string to ensure that it is empty at the start. Then we're going to set the load interval to be equal to set interval which is a function that accepts another callback function. And as the second parameter, it accepts a number of milliseconds. So every 300 milliseconds, we want to do something. And what do we want to do? Well, we want to add another dot to that element text content. So we can say element dot text content plus equal to dot. Now, if the loading indicator has reached three dots, we want to reset it. So we can say if element dot text content is triple equal to dot 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 dot, meaning four dots, then we want to reset it by setting element dot text content to an empty string. And this is going to repeat every 300 milliseconds. Great. We cannot yet see this in action, but we'll be able to see it soon. Now there's another similar function that we have to create. 
If you remember correctly, while the API is typing, it's going to type one letter by letter, like this. So we want to implement that typing functionality. We don't want the entire text to simply appear instantly. Yes, that might be faster, but we as humans want to perceive this as if the robot or AI is thinking and is giving out his response as we read it. So that's going to improve our user experience. So let's create a function called type text that's going to accept the element and the text as parameters. At the start, the index is going to be set to zero. Then we want to create another interval by saying let interval is here, you can create your account or simply continue with Google. Once you sign up, you'll be redirected to the overview page. The OpenAI team did a great job to get you started with the basics. So you can have a quick start tutorial or you can check out some examples. They also immediately allow you to build an app using text completion, image generation, code completion, and so much more. But thankfully, to make the process even simpler, you have me today. You're watching this video and I'm going to guide you step by step on how to create our great Codex application. So to get started, click your profile on top right and click view API keys. Right here, you can create a new secret key. And finally, you can copy it. Back inside of our code, you can open the file explorer and then in the root of our application, you can create a new .env file. Make sure it is in the root and not in the server folder. Inside of the .env file, you can say openAI underscore API underscore key is chat GPT is all over social media. I'm sure you've seen some crazy things it can do. It might have even made you think, is it powerful enough to replace developers? Well, the developers, my friend, are the ones that built it. And that's precisely what you'll do today in this single video. You'll build your first JavaScript AI, a chat GPT AI application using OpenAI's newest machine learning model. With an elegant user interface that resembles the chat GPT app, communication with advanced GPT-3 model API, and most importantly, the ability to ask the AI for help regarding JavaScript, React, or any other programming language, giving it code and translating it to another programming language, and much more. The CodeGPT application is the best AI-based web application that you can currently find on YouTube. Building this single web app with me will give you the knowledge to use all OpenAI APIs to build any website you can imagine. You'll even deploy it to the internet so you can share it with your friends, potential employers, and put it on your portfolio. You might be wondering, what are the prerequisites for building such a fantastic website? This course is entirely beginner friendly. We'll use the most in-demand technologies today, such as HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Vite, Node.js, and of course, OpenAI. We're going to start simple and then move to more complex topics as we go. I'll explain every step of the way. Alongside building this application, you'll also learn how to pass into this function. So let's read the docs. Going back to our overview, let's go to examples. And now let's try typing code, natural language to open AI API. And let's click open playground. Great, this is a great example. We can choose one from a couple of different models available right here on the right side. We have Code Da Vinci 2, Code Cushman 1, and then we have Text Da Vinci 3. Now, code models are capable of generating code. But in this case, I found the Text Da Vinci 3 to be more capable. It can understand text as well as code, and it can produce higher quality output. So in this case, we're gonna to switch to text Da Vinci 3. And as you can see, there are a lot of different things. There are variables such as temperature, maximum length, stop sequences, and so much more. But let's click view code. This is going to give you a snippet of code. As you can see, we have already written some things such as the import of the configuration and then creating the instance and then the response. But now we are interested in these things. 
the parameters that we can pass into the model. So let's copy those params and go back to the code. We can paste them right here and indent them properly. First, the model is going to be text-davinci-003. Then we want to pass in a prompt. And this prompt is going to be dollar sign and curly braces within a string right here. That's going to be prompt. We are passing it from the front end. Remember the text area? Well, it contains the data for our prompt. Now we can set the temperature. Higher temperature value means the model will take more risks. In this case, we don't really want a lot of risks. We want it to answer with what it knows. Then are you going to write that server side code to make a call to open AI? Well, we're going to create a new file called server.js. From within this file, we're going to do all the setup and all the configuration to be able to call OpenAI's API. But first, we need the API key. And we can get it straight from openapi.com forward slash API. They say, build next-gen apps with OpenAI's powerful models. We'll be able to access GPT-3, which performs a variety of natural language tasks. Codex, which translates natural language to code, and DALI, which creates and edits original images. This is incredibly powerful. So let's go ahead and click get started. Right here, able to see the changes that we made to our handle submit, we have to somehow call it, right? So below the handle submit, let's say form dot add event listener. And it's going to be a listener for a submit event. And once we submit, we want to call the handle submit function. Also, we as developers are used to submitting everything by simply pressing the enter key and not clicking the button. So we can say form dot add event listener, which is going to be a key up, meaning once we press and release the enter key, then we want to call this callback function. There, we can check if e dot key code is triple equal to 13. That is the enter key. And then we can handle the submit. Great. Now we can go back into the browser and check what, and we're going to pass it a unique ID. In this case, I have a typo. We don't need an equal sign here. We're not creating arrow functions. That's just a habit from writing a lot of React code. By the way, you know that on JSM, we write a lot of React applications. Is writing plain JavaScript, vanilla JavaScript, something that you'd like to see more of on the channel, or would you like me to create more advanced React applications? Please write down in the comments. Your answer means so much to me. With that said, this function is going to return a template string. Keep in mind, it has to be a template string, not a regular string, because with regular strings, you cannot create spaces or enters. But with template strings, you can. So right here, we're going to create a div. This div is going to have a class, not class name as in React, just class, equal to wrapper. And then inside of there, we can put dollar sign and curly braces and check if is AI, then we can say AI. That's going to be a special class. Now within that div, we can create another div that's going to have a class equal to chat. And within that div, we can have one more div that's going to have a class equal to profile. Finally, we can show an image, which is going to be a self-closing tag inside of the profile. It's going to have a source that's going to be equal to dynamic block of code. If is AI, then bot, otherwise user. These are the two icons we imported before. We can also get which is going to be a prompt. And that's it. Finally, we want to clear the text area input. So we can do that by typing form dot reset. And now we are ready for the bots chat stripe. First, we want to generate a unique ID for its message. Const unique ID is equal to generate unique ID. That's the function we created before. And then as we created a chat stripe for us, we also want to do that for it. So right here, we can copy that message, say chat container dot inner HTML plus equal to chat stripe, 
but this time it's going to be true because the AI is typing. In here, we want to give it as the second parameter, simply a string with one empty space there because it's going to fill it up later on right here. Remember, we are filling it up as we are loading the actual message. And finally, we're going to provide it a unique ID as the third parameter. Now, as the user is going to type, we want to keep scrolling down to be able to see that message. So we can say chat container dot scroll top is equal to chat container dot scroll height. This is going to put the new message in view. Now we want to fetch this newly created div. Const message div is equal to document dot get element by ID. And we're going to pass in the unique ID. Hopefully now you can see why we needed to create a new unique ID for every single message. Finally, we want to turn on the loader. So we can say loader and we can pass in the message div right here. Great. Now to be equal to a string and then you can paste your API key. That is all that we have to do for now. You can close that and we can get back to creating our server.js. Inside of here, we're first going to import a couple of things. We're going to import express from express. Then we're going to import everything as .env from .env. This is going to allow us to get that data from that env file. We're then going to import course, which is going to allow us to make those cross origin requests. And finally, we're going to import inside of curly braces configuration and open AI API from open API. Open API team did a great job of creating these wrappers that we can use to simplify our use of open API. To be able to use the .env variables, we need to say .env.config. And then we can get started with the configuration. We can say const configuration is equal to new configuration. That's a function which accepts an object. And there we simply need to pass an API key, which is equal to process.env.openai underscore API underscore key. Great. Then we need to create an instance of OpenAI by saying const OpenAI is equal to new OpenAI API. And then you pass in that configuration. Once you do that, we need to initialize our express application by saying const app is equal to express, and then you call it as a function. We want to set up a couple of middlewares so we can say app.use course. Again, this is going to allow us to make those cross origin requests and allow our server to be called from the front end. Then we can say app.use express.json. This is going to allow us to pass JSON from the front end to the back end. We can also create a dummy root route by saying app.get forward slash. It's going to be an asynchronous function that's going to accept a request and a response. And it's simply going to return a restat status 200 dot send message of hello world. Or we can even say hello from codex. There we go. But more importantly, we need to create an app dot post route. So what is the difference between app that get? Well, with the get route, you can't really receive a lot of data from the front end. But the post one allows us to have a body or a payload. So right here, we are going to say the forward slash route, but this time post request, a sync rec and res the same as before. But now we can get the data from the body of the front end request. First of all, let's wrap everything in a try and catch block like this. And then let's get our prompt by saying const prompt is equal to rec that body dot prompt. And now for the most important thing, we want to create a response or get a response from the open API. So we can say const response is equal to await openai dot create completion. It's a function that accepts an object. Now there are a lot of different things that we can pass we have so far. 
if you reload your page and type hello there and press enter, you can see that we have hello there and our AI is actually thinking and it's adding dots to its response. This is not looking exactly as it does in the finished application, but no worries, we're gonna come back here and we're going to fix it. But first, let's focus on what matters the most. And that is getting ready to create our own backend application that's going to make a call to the open AI's chat GPD API. Are you excited? So to get started with that, we can momentarily, but just shortly close the script.js file, collapse the client folder, and we can create a new server folder right here. Then we can go to view and then terminal. We can press control C and then Y to stop it from running. We can CD dot dot to move a directory up and then CD into server to move into the server directory. Finally, we can run npm init dash y. This is going to generate a new package.json file inside of our server. Then we need to install a couple of dependencies we'll be using for our server-side application. And we can do that by running npm install course used for cross-origin requests dot env used for secure environment variables express as a backend framework nodemon to keep our application running when we implement changes and open ai finally you can press enter and in a couple of moments all of these dependencies will be installed right here and you can see them from within the package.json file now you might be wondering where i give it an alt tag and if it is ai we're gonna simply leave a string of bot. Usually it's going to be a string of user. And finally, and most importantly, below our div containing the profile, we're going to create another div with a class name or rather just class equal to message. We're going to also give it an ID equal to, it's going to be dynamic, unique ID. And finally, inside of that div, we can render the value which is going to be that AI generated message. Perfect, now we have our chat stripe and we are ready to start creating our handle submit function, which is going to be the trigger to get the AI generated response. So let's create a function, const handle submit. It's going to be an async function and it's going to take an event as the first and only parameter. I mistype async right here. So if we fix that, we're good. And the default browser behavior for when you submit a form is to reload the browser, but we don't want that to happen. So we can say e.preventDefault and call it like this. This is going to prevent the default behavior of the browser. Now we want to get the data that we typed into the form. So we can say cons data is equal to new form data and then we can pass in the form. Remember, if you look at what that form is, this is simply a form element from within our HTML. Then we want to generate a new chat stripe. We typed something, we want to add it, right? So we can generate the user's chat stripe. We can do that by getting into the chat container, into its inner HTML, and then saying plus equal to chat stripe, we pass in false as it's not the AI, it's us. Then we pass the data dot equal to set interval, same thing as the last time. And the second parameter this time is going to be only 20 milliseconds for each letter. Inside of there, we want to check if index is lower than text dot length. That means that we're still typing. So if we are still typing, we can set the element dot inner HTML plus equal to text dot char add index. This is going to get the character under a specific index in the text that AI is going to return. And of course we want to increment that index. Else, if we have reached the end of the text, then we want to simply clear the interval. Great. Now we can type text and we can load AI's answers. 
Now, later on, we'll also have to generate a unique ID for every single message to be able to map over them. So let's create a function called generate unique ID. That's a function. And in JavaScript and in many other programming languages, how you generate a unique ID is by using the current time and date. That is always unique. So we can say const timestamp is equal to, and we can set the max tokens, which is the maximum number of tokens to generate in a completion. In this case, let's stick with 3000. This means that it can give pretty long responses. Top B can remain one. Frequency penalty means that it's not going to repeat similar sentences often. So we can set that to 0 0.5. So if it says something and you ask it a similar question, it is less likely to say a similar thing. And we don't need a stop in our case. Great. Finally, once we get the response, we want to send it back to the front end by saying rest that status 200 dot send inside of an object. We're going to say bot response dot data dot choices zero dot text. Perfect. And finally, in the catch, if something goes wrong, we can console.log our error. And we can also res.status 500.send error like this. So we know what happened. Great. Believe it or not, this is it. This is all that you have to do to be able to get a response from the most powerful AI in the world. Now, we just have to make sure that our server always listens for new requests. So we can say app.listen 5000. We're going to have a callback function to let us know, explain the difference between view and react. It's going to think a bit and it's going to give you an answer. As you can see, they're both popular JavaScript libraries, but the main difference is approach to component based development. Great. As we said, it can also give you exercises. So you can say, give me a React or a JavaScript exercise, and it can even test you on it. So it's a phenomenal tool to use while they're developing. But the best part, of course, is that you developed it. And you can put it on your portfolio and you can show everybody that you build an AI tool. With that said, the last thing to do is, of course, to deploy it. To do that, we can close all of the currently open tabs, go back to the code, stop both of our terminals from running by pressing Control C and then Y. We can delete one. And finally, we can deploy our server side first. Now, to deploy our application, we're actually first going to put it as a GitHub repository on GitHub. So let me show you how to do that. First step is to sign in to your GitHub repository. Go to the top right, click this plus icon, and click New Repository. Call the repository however you want to, something like Codex. Make it public, and click Create a Repository. Now, you can follow these commands to publish our code. Let's put the browser and the code editor side by side. There we go. Make sure to cd from the client into the root by saying cd dot dot. You need to be at the root of your repository. Then simply say git init, git add dot. Now we can close the backend. We can open up our file explorer and go into our client, script.js, and we can get back where we left things. That's going to be right here below this loader. This is the place where we can fetch the data from the server, which means that we can get the bot's response. To do that, we simply need to create a new response. So const response is equal to await fetch. And now we can fetch HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash. Rather, it's going to be HTTP since we're still on localhost. Localhost colon 5000. We can also provide a second parameter, which is an object containing all of the options. In this case, a method of post. Then we can provide headers, which is going to be an object containing a content dash type application forward slash JSON. 
And finally, we need to pass thing went wrong. And we're going to alert the error. There we go. Believe it or not, this is it. With that said, let's go ahead and test our newly created API endpoint. Going back to our browser, we are on our front end and let's try to type how to create a React functional component and press enter. As you can see, we have our user icon and we have one dot right here, which makes it seem like it's not actually loading. So to check if things are working, we can go to inspect console and we can see that message div div is not defined. It handles submit line 93. So most likely I just put a dumb typo right here. And yes, that indeed was the case message div. I also noticed that we don't have a proper CSS being added inside of our profile. And that's because I typed class name right here instead of class. I always keep thinking that I'm in React. And finally, the loading doesn't seem to be all right. It seems like there is only one dot. So if we go back to loading, right now it seems fine, but we're gonna get back to it if we notice inconsistencies. So going back, we can keep our terminal opened and we can give it another shot. Let's try, hello, how are you? And this time we get an error, error saying 401. 401 status code means unauthorized. And that would made me assume that inside of the server, right here, our configuration is not being done properly because we're not authorized with this specific key. I mean, this key is working. We got it straight from OpenAI, but maybe we have to reload our terminal. So I'm gonna press Control C and then Y. I'm gonna, you can see that we get the parse data there and it's an actual string. So why is this text.char ad complaining? Let's delete this, scroll all the way up and we can easily notice why is it complaining? That's because I typed chart ad and not char ad. So if we fix this method, which now works with this text that we saw was there, we can say hello, three dots, and there we go. Hi there, how can I help you? Now this time, let's give it a really tough prompt. I'm gonna say create a 3D sphere in JavaScript and press enter. As you can see, it is thinking, but it is thinking more than three dots. So we want to have that usual dot repeating, but hey, after some time, we're getting back the response. It's actually creating a 3D sphere using 3JS JavaScript library for 3D modeling. And it's even giving us comments on each one of the lines here. Isn't that crazy? Let's try something regarding React create a routing for these routes, home, about, work, and contact in React.js using React Router DOM v6. It's gonna import everything it needs and it's going to create all of the routes right here. Isn't this crazy? Now, before playing with it a bit more, let's fix the loading. Going back, we notice that it clear it and I'm gonna rerun the server again by running npm run start. We can also console log the process.env.openAPI key right here to see if it comes back. Right now, it seems to be undefined, but if we put the .env inside of the server, press save one more time, it is there. So when I told you to keep it outside, that didn't really make sense. We ought to keep it inside of the server because that's the only place where we're gonna use it. Great. Now we can remove this console log, we can collapse our terminals, and we are ready to retest our application. Now OpenAI knows this secret key that we have, and it should give us access to AI's responses. Going back, let's try with the same prompt. Hello, how are you? And there we go, now we get three dots, but this time we get an error. Text char at is not a function, line 26. So going back to our script and to line 26, that's right here, we're looking at char at, and it cannot seem to find it from this text, which means that this text is maybe undefined. 
So let's see where are we calling the type text function. It's being called right here. And we're passing the parse data as a parameter. So it shouldn't be empty. Let's go ahead and give it a console log parsed data. We can even put it inside of an object to immediately know what we are console logging. Now, if we go back and try with hello, adds it to the chat container as a chat stripe, and then fetches data from the server to get the bot's response. The response is added to the chat container as another stripe, and then typed out using type text. Finally, an event listener is added to both submit and key up events of the form element. Isn't that crazy? It explained everything we've done throughout this entire video. And if we press this responsive mode, you can see that the bot is fully responsive. This is looking great even on mobile devices. Now, it looks like the loading still isn't fixed. If I type hello, you can see it has more than three dots. So is it possible that I misspelled the text content one more time? Right here, yep, that's text context instead of text content. There we go, I've been working with React context a lot, I guess. So going back and typing something really hard, like write a function that determines whether the email is valid or not in JavaScript, we should be able to see that new loading. There we go, dot, 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 the AI is thinking. So let's see if we can do it. Yes, it's actually going to spit out a function is valid email in JavaScript for us. This is phenomenal. You have created your own AI that's going to help you code. Keep in mind, it can also help you learn how to code. As we discussed, it can explain different things. It's not stopping after four dots. And that is because I had another typo right here. It's text context. I had an extra N right here. So this should fix it. Going back, let's give it an extra hard prompt this time. I'm gonna say, explain this code. And it's going to be a lengthy piece of code. So as you can see, you can even expand your text area right here. There we go. And I'm gonna paste it. This code is a function that takes two parameters, an element and text. And it creates an interval that runs every 20 milliseconds. Inside the interval, it checks if the index is less than the length of the text. If it is, it adds the character as the current index of the inner HTML. And if you look at this function, this is the function from our code. Isn't that crazy? But what if we wanted to know what this entire script that we wrote does? I'm going to copy everything, go back and say, explain the following code and simply paste it and press enter. It's thinking, as you can see, this code is creating a chat bot. It imports two SVG images for the user and bot profile pictures. It then creates a for element and a chat container element. It then defines functions for loading, typing text, generating unique IDs, and creating chat stripes. The handle submit function is then created to handle the form submission. It takes the user's input from the form as our valuable body. So we can say body is equal to json.stringify. We pass in an object where we say prompt is equal to data.get prompt. This is the data or the message coming from our text area element on the screen. Great. Now, after we get the response, we want to clear the interval. So we can say clear interval, load interval, because we're no longer loading. And we want to set the message div dot in our HTML to be equal to an empty string, because we're not sure at which point in the loading are we right now at the point when we fetch, we might be at one dot, two dots or three dots, but we want to clear it to be empty for us to be able to add our message. So what we can do then is say if response dot okay, then we can say cons data is equal to await response dot json. This is giving us the actual response coming from the backend, but we need to parse it. So we can say const parsed data is equal to data dot bot dot trim. And finally, we can pass it to our type text function, which we created before. So we can simply pass the message div 
as well as parsed data. And then if we have an error, we can say else const error or ERR is equal to await response.text. And then we're going to set the message div dot inner HTML to be equal to some data we started. So we can say console.log server is running on port 5000. As a matter of fact, let's say HTTP colon forward slash forward slash localhost colon 5000. That way we'll be able to immediately click it from within Arc Terminal. Great. With that said, we can now run our server. So let's go to our package.json. And right here within the scripts, we're going to remove our test script and add a new script called server. There we want to call a command called nodemon server whenever we call that script. Also, we want to add a type equal to module. This is going to allow us to use the imports instead of regular old require statements. And I think we can remove the main right here because it might conflict the index.js from the server. Great. Now we are ready to run npm run server. Again, make sure that you are in the server directory. And as you can see, server is running on port localhost 5000. And you can control click it. And there we go. We have a message, hello from Codex. This means that it works. But we don't really care about this HTTP GET request. We care about the post that we're going to submit from our front end. So now that our server is running, you can press this button right here to split the terminal. Now within our other terminal, we want to cd dot dot and then cd client and then npm run dev. This is going to allow us to run the server side and the client side simultaneously. So there we go. Our codex is here. Our local host is here and we are ready to connect them. So now to publish our application to GitHub, there are two important things we need to do. First of all, we have to move away from the client into the root of our application. To do that, we can say CD dot dot. As you can see, we are in the root. And the second thing is you need to add a new dot git ignore file. And inside of there, we can add our dot env as well as node underscore modules. This is going to ensure to not push the .env or the node modules into GitHub. You never want to do that. Now you can say git init, git add dot, git commit dash m first commit. Then you can copy the next three commands, git branch dash m main, git remote add origin, and finally git push u origin main. And just like that, your repository is going to be pushed. You can reload your page and your code is right here. Perfect. Now let's get ready to deploy our server. To deploy our server side for free, we're going to use render.com. So let's click get started for free. And let's create a new account. Let's sign up using GitHub. Once you create an account, you'll be redirected to their dashboard. Click new and select web service. Connect a new repository. Scroll down. And in here, you can enter the public Git repository of your application. So if you go back, you can copy this URL and you can paste it right here and press continue. Now we need to add a name. So let's do codex and you can do something similar. In this case, you can choose a region. In my case, I'm going to choose EU as it's closest to me. You can choose the branch. And this is really important. You have to add a root directory. So in this case, it's going to be server. Environment is going to be node. And the build command is going to be yarn or npm. And the start command is going to be npm run server. You can choose free. And you can click create web service. There we go. For the first time ever, it's building it out. And it's going to deploy your server on this URL right here. While that is in progress, feel free to check out jsmastery.pro. There you can choose one out of three complete courses. 
If you're learning JavaScript, you can check the complete path to JavaScript mastery course. If you want to dive into React, you can check out our FilmPower course, where you build an entire movie application. And finally, if you want to dive into the world of Web3, you can build an NFT marketplace application. If you'd want myself and other mentors to work with you one-on-one -on -one and help you get a job, then the Masterclass experience is for you. Take the quiz and find out if you're a get fit. With that said, our server should be deployed already. So let's close this tab and check it out. There we go. Server running on port localhost 5000. That seems good, but it's still in progress. But let's give it a shot anyway. So let's click this link and let's copy it as well. Still, we got a 502, which means that we got to wait just a bit. While we're waiting, we can also add environment variables. So head to environment and click add environment variable. From within our code, we know that the name of the variable is open AI underscore API key. And then you can copy this string right here and paste it and click save changes. Finally, we can go back to events. And then we can see that another deploy is in progress. So let's click here and wait just a bit. And there we go. After a couple of minutes, our website is now live. Don't let this line fool you. Server is running on port 5000. It's not. This was just our hard coded sentence in the code, but our server is now deployed on this URL right here. So let's check it out. And there we go. Hello from Codex. Now you can copy it, go back to our front end code, go to the client side, script, and most importantly, scroll down to where we're calling our server. It's right here, localhost 5000. No more will we be calling our local server. We want to call the one that's deployed on the internet. This one we can access from wherever. So once that is done, we are ready to deploy our frontend as well. And we're going to deploy our frontend using Vercel. So go to vercel.com and click start deploying. Click continue with GitHub. Choose Codex from the list and click import. Give it a name and change the root directory from that slash to client. And you can see that Vercel intelligently recognizes that we're using Vite to build our client side. So click continue and click deploy. The deployment process started. It's going to take just about a minute and then we'll be able to access both our front end and the back end straight from the internet. And there we go. We got some confetti. Let's continue to our dashboard and let's click visit. Codex betaversellapp is where my application is deployed. It's going to be on a different link for you. And let's give it a shot. Are you still here? Let's see if it answers. Now, it seems like we're stuck on a loading screen. So if we open inspect element and go to console, we can see on code in promise type error failed to fetch. And the reason for that might be inside of our script. Even though we updated the new server endpoint, we haven't pushed it. So how can our deployed code in Vercel know that we actually did update it? Because it got it from GitHub. So what we have to do is go back to our terminal by going to view and then terminal and then saying git add dot git commit. We can say update the server URL and then git push. Now this is going to push it to GitHub and then Vercel should pick up the change immediately. As you can see, it is building it. And once it builds it, we should be able to make a call to our new URL. Great. So now if we go to deployments, you can see it is live. We can reload our application. Say, are you still here? Question mark. We are waiting and there we go. Yes, I'm still here. Let's try something crazy now. Give me a step-by-step -step guide on learning JavaScript. Put it in bullet points and explain it to 
me like I'm five. Let's see if it does it. There we have it, guys. Learn the basics, start learning the basics of JavaScript, such as variables, data types, functions, 